Hello, I am Dr. Shrikant and I represent uh, my co-investigator, Dr. Junaid and Manipal College of Dental Sciences, Mangalore, where we conducted this study on the geomorphometric shape analysis as a sexual dimorphism feature in maxillary first premolar. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, there seems to be a mistake. This is not my slide. Hello. So I think you requested to make a presentation from your end. Yes. So can you share yes. your screen? Can I do that? Yeah. Yes, yes please, 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 do please, please sir, do that. Yeah. Okay. Just give me a moment. Really sorry, it was just a confusion from our end. Yes. Uh, just give me a moment. I'm opening my presentation in a moment here. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I think due to lots of animations you have requested to present from your end. Yes, because I had an idea like that. Okay. Yes, uh, yes. Shall I share the screen? Yes, sir. Please do, sir. Okay. Here you go. I will share the audio of the uh, video also in the sense share computer sound. Yeah. All right. So is it visible? Please confirm. Uh, yes, sir. It is visible. I think due to the bandwidth problem, uh, if you can just turn off the video, then it will, I think, come in a proper way. Perfect. I shall do that. Okay. So uh, as I said, I am Shrikant and I'm representing Dr. Junaid and my college, Manipal College of Dental Sciences. And uh, we have done a shape analysis of the maxillary first premolar, which is as an indicator for sexual dimorphism. And we did it in two dimensions. To begin with, let's have a look at this uh, uh, advertisement. Which girl? Flip it. Look, this angle is right. Much better, sir. Sir, you to see. Sir, go make it. So as you see in this particular animation, these gentlemen, the executives are looking at and contemplating what is the right shape of their tips product. And in this case, all three are triangles. So does that mean that all the three triangles are the same or does it really ma matter? So if you look at these premolars, so if I give you three premolars, is it possible for you to identify the shape of the premolar? That is the question. And to give clarity to this question, we have geomorphometry. Geomorphometry is a procedure which looks at the shape of a biological component. It's been done by many uh, faculties, uh, like Hall et al. has done in the wings of Drosophila. Uh, there are researchers done on the primate skulls. There are researchers done on the premolars as done by Young et al. So based on this idea, we developed a plan to identify the two-dimensional geometric morphometric analysis and mark the anatomic and geometric landmarks and identify whether there is any sexual dimorphism present. The whole process involved the sample calculation, landmark acquisition, and some statistical analysis by describing. It was calculated based upon the centroid that I read from Ong et al. article. And we arrived at a sample of around six from the casts. And these casts were obtained after due permission from the Department of Orthodontics. Uh, the individuals in the age group of 14 to 20 years with no carious lesion in the premolar or trauma in that region was uh, discussed. And the photograph was taken such that the plane is perpendicular to the line of angulation of the lens. We had a set of uh, landmarks which included anatomical evidence landmarks 11 in number geometric landmarks which are eight in number as you can see in the red dots and the crosses these were then analyzed using a software called as tps util and tps dick where you can see these red dots that have been placed 
these are the landmarks that has been marked these landmarks were marked in 55 castes which included 22 females 33 males the whole process is points of each of these landmarks which were then transferred to a software called as morpho j morpho j is a software which is used to analyze these landmark points and this uses a principle called as procrustes superimposition procrustes is a greek mythology character he's a serial killer basically who tries to fit the individuals of his victims into his bed by chopping off the extremities having this vaguely in mind i'm showing you two triangles here there's a red triangle there's a green triangle and you can obviously make out that the two triangles are slightly different so you can see the red and the green dots these are the centroids which are translated they are rotated and then they are scaled so that the three vertices are comparable once these three vertices are comparable principal components analysis and shape variation using canonical variate and discriminant function graph this is called as a scree plot where you can see that the top 10 and 11 principal components are able to account for nearly 80 percent of the variation of the shape of the premolar on the left you can make out the various landmarks on the right you can see the deformation graph let me come to the centroid size first centroid size did not show any significant difference indicating male and female have the same size of premolar however the shape based upon the procrustes ANOVA showed a p-value of close to 0.05, which indicated that the shape of the teeth varied more. In the deformation graph, all these red areas are showing the maximum amount of variation. Discriminant function analysis was correctly able to delineate male and female casts based on the premolar shape in 50 out of 55 cases. Canonical variate analysis, as you can see here, each of these blue dots and lines, they represent the variation in the landmarks. This showed that male teeth have more buccally placed distobuccal cusp and more lingually placed buccal crest of curvature, as well as the mesiolingual cusp bridge end. So why is it important to understand the shape? The premolar is a very unique tooth. The mesial marginal developmental groove, the mesial developmental depression gives a characteristic asymmetry which has been analyzed by Bailey and Lynch and they were able to correctly classify the Neanderthal and the modern humans in 98.1% of the cases. The concept that a centroid did not vary is supported by Banerjee et al. and Yong et al. study by, in Australian and Indian populations. And this shape is actually influenced by hormones, genetics as well as epigenetic factors. However, genetics plays the primary role in understanding the shape. That is because genes like MSX, SPRI2, GAS1, RUNX2 have been researched, which are an important component in morphodifferentiation of a tooth in advanced Bell stage. So to conclude, I would say that this two-dimensional geometric morphometric analysis was able to distinguish the shape of a premolar very consistently in 90.91% of the cases. However, the size did not show sexual dimorphism. Further research, I would like to include the third dimension of these landmarks, making it a 3D geometric morphometric shape evaluation, which I am sure will be more accurate than the two-dimensional morphometrics. This was my presentation. Thank you for your hearing and it's open for discussion.